Hello everybody, welcome back to AI War 2. We're going to see the proper quote-unquote way to defend a planet today and perhaps get in some early strategic considerations. This is of course our homeworld of Omega G. We only have one wormhole to concern ourselves with right over here, that's to Blue Wonder. And once you've decided that you're going to try to defend a system, there are multiple sort of types that vary what you're going to want to do a little bit. But in this case, obviously what we're wanting to do is defend a critical structure. In this case, our home command station, the most critical structure that there is. And even though it's not strictly necessary at this point in the game, I do recommend building maximum defenses on the home world in general for safety. And we're going to be doing that here to demonstrate a few things. So, building. We have four different kinds of turrets. We've got tachyon and tractor arrays. And, of course, we've got the main force field. That's pretty much what we have to work with at this point, along with the station keeping frigates. And the first thing that you want to do, we'll see why shortly, is identify the shortest range turret among your mid-range ones. And we, as it happens, we don't have any short range ones. We've got the spider turret with infinite range. Everything else is in a middling range, which is about 10 to 12,000. We've got 12,000 for the MLRS range, 12 for the nucleophilic, and 10 and change for the pike. So this is one we want to place first. And the reason is this one's going to let us sync up all of the other ones. So... The AI, when they come into a system, will always, always, always head for a critical structure. And if you have them in different places, they might split up, they might team up on one, whatever. There are different things they can do. But if you put everything in one area as a general idea, you then you know they're going to head straight for that. Then you can use that information to create a concentrated fire focus on that area. So this is the vector that we need to defend. Nothing else matters. There are no other wormholes. Only having one wormhole out allows us that focus. Then we want to engage as far away from what we're protecting, the command station, as possible, so that you know the further back that we destroy them or stop them, the less of their ships will get in range of our command station. They will possibly have some long-range ships, but if we can stop at least the short-range ones further away, we're going to be better off. Now, you can imagine, like, if we put this out here, we could potentially have a problem because the ships, enemy ships, could eventually get through and circle around our force field here. So you want it to always be covering the command station itself. And it just so happens that we can't quite reach the wormhole, but we almost can if we put it there. And in Classic, the recommendation was to put it all the way back like this because then the ships would tend to bump around the force field if they got through with a prolonged attack and eventually bounce around the edge. I don't think that they do that as much in AI War 2. And I think that they would have eliminated this stuff by the time they were able to go through all of that process. So here what we're going to do is I'm just going to put it so it's just covering the command station itself. And so that gives us plenty of room to extend out this way. And we don't have any worry about it, them like going past what we can shoot at. So if we set it right there, and then we're just going to place all of the pike turrets in that location. Okay, so now if we show the range, that front area right over here, this front part of the arc, we want to sync up all of our other turrets so that they will engage at that point. So like, for example, the MLRS, we'll place those next, and that's 12,000. So we could put them here, but then it would be wasting range out here. And the reason why it's wasted, by the way, I'm going to offset these a bit because the other turrets are going to go down there. But if we place these here, then they're further away. The further your turrets can be and still engage at that same point 
is going to make things work out better because, again, the longer range ships will have a harder time hitting you. Nucleophilic, also 12,000. And we're going to go about there, right below where these were. So now we've got this lovely ball, and if we just sort of, we can see that we're pretty close. Some of these, like they, you know, they vary based on which one it is. Some of them going out a little bit further. Now the spider turrets. Well, the spider turrets have infinite range, so it doesn't matter where they are in terms of hitting the enemy. But... Given that they're going to head on a beeline this direction, I like to put them right in front of the force field. And that way, they'll tend to shoot these before the force field as a last-ditch thing if they get through everything else. You want to put them a little bit in front, because otherwise they're going to, you know, be under the force field. Remember, we don't want that. Let's, uh, let's see why again. Units protected by this will deal half the usual damage. That's not a good thing. And the spiders, again, they don't do very much damage. Their main goal is to slow down the target. They do still do some, and by putting them just in front of the force field, again, they'll be targeting them first. That's part of the goal there. Okay, so, tachyon arrays. We're going to want these, one of them, to go at the same point so that the ships will be visible when they reach that engagement envelope. If they get through, it's a good idea to have one here near the command station for close range. And then you could, the third one, you could say, well, we want to have it in the middle. But by the time they get down there, you're pretty much going to have detected them. They won't be still cloaked when they're firing. So I'm actually going to just suggest putting the second one right up here as well. And this is just sort of a backup one back there. And then tractor arrays. And again, same sort of placement. And we'll go ahead and grab the ones from the battle station. And those are down as well. So the main idea here is that as they come in, they'll just barely leave the wormhole and they'll be stopped by the tractor arrays, most of them, for some indeterminate period of time. Meanwhile, they'll get pounded by the spider turrets, additionally slowing them down. And there'll be a bunch of firing at the tachyon and tractor arrays. If they destroy them, then they can move forward but we'll be holding them in place right there, and then all of our turrets are back here as far as possible to sort of, you know, discourage the enemy from shooting at them, and they'll try to pound the enemy as they come in. And so that's going to give us the maximum delay and the maximum amount of destructive power that we're going to direct towards the invaders. Let's take a look at the automation settings because I've changed a couple of things here. I am going to keep the watchman frigates on, factories, engineers, etc. I have auto work off and I have assault frigates building off. And notice this here. This is super useful and should not be turned off. And to that I say, I'm sorry. That is the wrong answer. And the reason it's the wrong answer Engineers don't cost any energy. They don't cost very much metal. But for them to work during combat, they will automatically be trying to go out, probably to this area, because that's the stuff that's gotten blown up first. And they will continually cycle themselves out here, get destroyed often. I mean, I guess you could view them being used as target practice or decoys to shoot at, but they're not very valuable for that purpose. And you're often going to want them elsewhere. For example, you might lose your frigates. And if you're micromanaging the battle, as you should if you want to play optimally, if it's a close battle in particular, then you might want to rebuild frigates back here in a safer location and have them go back out, and so on. And if you're going to do that, 
You don't want the engineers flying off wherever. Generally, you want to control where they go so they're doing something useful but not getting shot at. So I recommend having that off. And then the Assault Frigate Energy. 15,000. And 3,000 here. So just those are going to be 30,000 and 12,000, 42,000 energy. There are going to be cases where you do not want to build them. This is not one of those, by the way. So I am going to place these down. But you don't want to build them automatically if you're going to manage your economy properly. You want to sort of choose that on a planet-by-planet -planet basis, and we'll see examples of why we may not want that up coming in the future. All right, so we'll go ahead and unpause this wonderful situation. And, of course, they're going to build ships from the factories first. Go ahead and uh, speed this up a bit. All those are spawning down there, and we've got stuff happening here at our combat factory, the support fleet. There's our battle station from which where we get some of these, and these are building. And we're closing in now on the end of, okay, let's slow this down. End of those ships, and now they're building these. All of this happened without engineer support. And so now, as soon as these frigates are up, we are going to have fully set defenses in our home system. And we're definitely going to see at least another example or two of this later on in this run, because there's going to be different types of planets where you want to defend differently. But this is the basic example, single wormhole, absolutely vital target to defend, so you want maximum firepower to slow them down and shoot them in that area. Now, imagine if there was another wormhole, say, over here. We can see that would make things very difficult. You'd have to split defenses between the two. And, of course, there's going to be stuff like mines and gravitational buildings and other kinds of turrets that we're going to encounter later. But the basic principle is still going to be the same. But we'd have to split the two, and that would dilute our firepower. And that's exactly what we don't want. It's a major consideration in whether or not we're even going to try to defend a system. Now, let's say that it was over in this way. So it's a little bit closer, but there was a wormhole out this way. Well, then you'd want to split the difference and put your turrets, you know, in this general direction. And then the short-range stuff like tachyon and tractors, you could still split between the two. But you could have the longer-range turrets in the middle. Like, for example, if we take this, you can see that would have enough range that if the wormhole was close enough, you could put one in the middle here and it could cover the approach in both directions. So maximizing, concentrating your firepower is the key point. Let's take a look at the galactic situation in just a bit. So we have Blue Wonder, that's the gray AI, and then we have the red AI over here in Tamaria, and that's all we can see. More in the center of the galaxy and more exposed places, we'd be able to see more because they give you, to, at the beginning, you get scouting on any planet within two hops away. But it is well worth the price that we are paying here to be more secure. And we're going to get a fleet here. We're going to get a fleet and a distribution node here. And then, of course, this, at least for the moment will be the strong point and probably remain at the strong point of our homeworld defense uh, choke point out there. And hopefully protecting these two so we don't have to spend a huge amount of energy doing that. So what about hacking and tech and all of that? Well, the main principle strategically that you want to remember there is do not commit. Keep your options open as long as you can, unless you're absolutely sure. 95% isn't good enough. 98% isn't good enough. If you're 100% sure you need something or that you're going to want it, go ahead and invest. If it's any less than that, don't. Save it until later because we don't know what stuff is going to be out here. So the research that I want to do right away is only two things. If we notice our fleet here, again, we have fusion bombers, fusion bombers, parasitic fusion bombers. Not a real big stretch to think we might want fusion weapon upgrades. And of course, we're going to get a bonus to the MLRS and the assault frigates from this as well. 
So that syncs up very well with that. And again, you know, when you can get multiple things upgraded with the same technology, you definitely want to do that. So we're going to grab that. And as I mentioned in the previous run, I'm also going to want the logistical upgrade because I know we're going to have a number of these for sure it will be the majority command station that we'll build. And so we will go ahead and grab the logistical command station. That's all I'm doing. I'm leaving 10,000 in the bank. And similarly with hacking. Notice though with hacking, we actually have two, because we have two different AIs, we're going to have two different counters for the response level. So you can have a different response level for each AI. If you look at AI progress here, you could have, you know, if you had different difficulty levels, you could have a different potentially mark level for each AI because that's based to a degree on what the current difficulty is. And you can also notice here, there's some different things. Wormhole invasions. Unlock at AI progress 240. We're going to actually try to avoid even getting to that. But that's a new thing that the AI can do on the standard and higher difficulties that we're not capable before. And, you know, the counterattack unlock, the reconquest unlock, the threat waves unlock, those are lower numbers than they were on difficulty four. And then the science history. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. And this shows what we have pre presently researched. This history is work in progress. If there's any pro inaccuracy, this problem is just with the history, not the gameplay. From what I've seen, it's working fine, but something to keep your eye on. That was, of course, recently added. And you might say, well, why didn't you upgrade Fusion more? I mean, if it's going to be so good, so synergistic for what you have, why only go up to level one? And one of the reasons for that is the scouting. We don't know how many tech vaults are out there. We had a couple techs in the first game that we had two for the same tech category. So if I were to, let's say I were to upgrade this further, like get up to like level three or something, and then I found two tech vaults, I would feel pretty stupid because I wouldn't be able to get the maximum benefit from them. And I'd much rather hack and save the research if I possibly can. Plenty of other things we could look at, but nothing else that we for sure need. Now, I wanted to mention something that I talked about in the setup video regarding ambush turrets, because I had a really interesting discussion with some of the players who really like ambush turrets and also with one of the people that's on the development team at Arson on the Discord. And they made some good points. First of all, I was wrong about uh, the sort of how good the ambush turrets are. They're better than I thought. Basically what they do is they get a big bonus to attacking an enemy that it comes out of the wormhole for the first 15 seconds. So they really help knock down the enemies at the beginning. They're a very short range turret. So the reason I generally don't like them for planetary defense is you have to put them really close to the wormhole. If you have multiple wormholes, you've got to divide them up and you can't put them further back because then you're wasting, they like literally have to overlap the wormhole or you're wasting some of their firepower because they have that 15 second burst. So I still think they're, in most cases, not a great turret for planetary defense. But they are very useful for other things. They get that ambush bonus when enemies em emerge from a structure that's being hacked, or when enemies emerge from a guard post. And there are other cases where one of the enemy fleets might be pathing through a system, and they can be used in that scenario, which is something you know, that I would not have immediately thought of. I would have had to experiment some to get to that point. And so there's some very good uses for them. I still would much prefer the spiders for what we're doing here, which is working on our planetary defense skills. Because anything that is slowed down takes longer to reach your target. If it takes longer to reach your target, you have a longer time to kill it and whittle down their numbers. They're going to do a lot less damage to the target, and that's what matters. But I was a little bit premature in throwing the ambush turrets under the bus, so to speak. And I like the fact that there are turrets in the game that can be used for that kind of specialist purpose. So I would be remiss if I didn't point that out. There's nothing inherently wrong with the ambush turrets as that type of weapon. 
But for your standard planetary defense setup, I still would not favor them. All right, so next time we're going to really get into the action. We're going to start expanding. We're going to attack Blue Wonder and hopefully beyond and see just how the AI reacts because it doesn't uh, sit on its heels nearly as much as we saw the first game. Hope you'll stick around for that. Thanks for watching, everybody. More AI War 2 will be coming back soon.